So we're back in the saddle after a wet, rainy, soaked Sunday in Baltimore. I enjoyed my time there. My first game, you know, out. It was it was a lot to take in. Even though some of the stars didn't play, I had a blast. I enjoyed my time there. I want to say a big shout out to Ken for um, his hospitality and uh, being able to sit and watch the game and talk football with him. And um, you know, I enjoyed you know breakfast with him and, and Josh. And so that was a good thing. Um, if you don't follow those guys, they were Ravens Film Study. They have an amazing blog that talks about all aspects of the Baltimore Ravens. So go check them out too. And um, let's get into Week 17, man. Finally back home. Uh, enjoy Baltimore. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. The um, fireworks on the the harbor were were awesome. About a 15 minute display of some awesome fireworks. So I enjoyed that. And um, some good food. Some really good food. Uh, some great people I met too. I met some great people, you know, didn't get out much, but then, then the little area I worked in, I met some great people. Uh, but let's get into this film session. Uh, this O-line appreciation. We, uh, <laughs> the big guys up front, they did an amazing job this year, man, amazing job. Uh, you see Orlando Brown on the screen. You see Ben Powers. You see uh, Macari. My boy Ben finally got a chance to to get in and get some, to get some shine, and, you know, a few plays will kind of talk about Ben. And um, let's just get into week 17, man. I'm excited for this playoff run. We got a bye week coming up. Um, I'm just, we, we're healthy for the most part. I'm just ready. I'm just ready. So let's get this started. Let's get this started. Um, O-line appreciation, we got talked about it earlier. Let's get into some stats first. Right here you see we rushed for 206 yards for the whole year. We averaged 206 yards a game, which is, which is an amazing stat. Next closest person right here is San Francisco with like 80 some odd yards per game less than us, which is which is crazy. Um, going on to the next stat. The next stat is uh, passing. We've seen our passing stats. We were 27 ranked, which is not great, but because we ran the ball so well, it's crazy. Uh, we were 206 yards a game. So with that being said, we're the first team ever to average 200 yards rushing and passing for a season, ever. NFL is celebrating, what, 150 this year? No, 100 years this year. College football is 150. Uh, NFL is um, doing 100 years, so no team in 100 years of football has ever rushed for 200, ran for 200. And if I am if I am wrong, correct me in the chat box, but I think I'm right. Um, moving on to the next stat. If you go back to that, that rushing, look at these rushing yards. Right here, 3,296. The next closest team was San Francisco at almost a 1,000 yards less. So we, that's what you call running down the throat. And you don't run the ball down the throat without good O-line play. Without good O-line play. But check this out also. The greatest rushing season ever. You'll see the, the former record right here, 3,165. We rushed for 3,296. We put up 200-plus yards rushing with, for the most part, backups Sunday. Gus went up for, had 100-something. RG3 had, I think, 50. Or maybe Justice had 50, and RG3 had whatever he had. But we still had 200-plus yards rushing with mixing and matching of the line because Ben would be in then they put other people in they just were switching it up left and right and so I just want to appreciate what them guys did in the in the elements and talk about this week 17 victory over the um Pittsburgh Steelers as first play right here I'm just gonna let it play first because some people talk about me not letting it play you know before they get to see what's going on so that's what I'm gonna do while I make this mouse bigger. And hopefully you can't see me doing this. Give me one second. Oh, don't want that. All right, now I'm back. So with that being said, I'm gonna just let this run through and then we'll talk about it from the back view. Justice going down here for like about a 13 yard gain. Let's see who does the work up front. Because, again, this is O-line appreciation. We don't care what Justice Hill do. Let's watch what the O-line do. 
Let, let's kind of take it piece by piece. Uh, this is Hearst. Hearst is here. Bozeman still in. McCarry's in. This is Ben. This is my guy. I thought he would be the starting left tackle by the season end. One of the things I could admit to being wrong about Ben, this is the first game he's even been active. So this is his first. This may not be his first play, but this is his first action, game action of the entire year. And these I kind of bounce around with these plays, so I don't know if it's first play or not. And this is, I think Zeus is still right here. But let's let's start with, with Hurst and see what goes on. Hurst is at left go, left tackle. Plays basically an inside zone type look. Hurst is gonna be one on one with 56. Not a bad job there, got him sealed off. Let's come back to Bozeman. Bozeman's Bozeman going to have a one-on-one -on -one block with 96. Does a good job of winning there with leverage. Now we got a double team with uh, Makari and Ben. Ben's here. Makari's here. We're going to double team 93 up to 98. Good jab step by Makari. He lets Ben take over that. Now he's on. Now Makari's going to climb to 98. Orlando does a good job of avoiding 94. 94 is the read. And Orlando's trying to get the 55, which is Bush. A voice and lets him come by. Goes up there. Now, we got he's the read man. So if he's coming straight at RG3, he can't tackle Justice. In which Justice comes, runs out of that little arm tackle. And now, with that being said, look at this gap right here. Orlando and um, whoever the tight end. Let's go back and see who this tight end was. Oh, that's, that's recall. Orlando and Ricard end up, end up on Bush, running him out the play. This good block right here by, um, I think this is uh, Powell's. Powell's at 93, yeah. So look at that hole. Look at that huge hole to run through. Just give him a little shimmy and gets 13. Good job up front. Let's let this one run. This is, I think, yeah, this is Gus is in the backfield. Gus is going to get you about 14. This is the outside zone. Great cutback. Outside zone right, stretch right. Let's see what the big fellas do. Let's see who in first. So we got Hurst still in. We got Bozeman still in. We got uh, Macari here. We got 70. 70 was M. I can't think his name. M something or whatever. And he played a lot. I thought, I didn't think I was going to see him at all. I thought um, Powers would play this position a lot. But this guy played. And I can't remember his name uh, off the top of my head. In chat box, if you remember it, I think it's. Put it in the chat box. I don't want to keep butchering. But let's again, let's start with Hurst. Come in outside zone right. Add him board to that. So his job is basically just to cut him off. He ain't really had no responsibility back here because he'll never get to Bush. Really just to cut this thing and off. And if we have a cutback, he's trying to seal this off and get him turned. Next on the, is, um, this is Bozeman. He's going to try to get to this shoulder of 97 and turn him. That way he can't get into the play also. Uh, Macari may shoot a hand here to help Bozeman out, but Bozeman has to get his butt on this side of 97 and, and turn him out. So with that being said, with nobody in this gap, Macari's um, assignment is Bush. He has to get to Bush's outside shoulder. Got to take a good angle because you know Bush is a former running back. Hadn't been playing linebacker alone, maybe three or four years. He got to beat him there. So he's going to have to take a flat angle to beat him down this line of scrimmage. Uh, number 70, I think. The guy, the name I couldn't remember, his job is to get to this outside shoulder. And he may get a little bump from, from Brown, but he, sh he shouldn't get much. And then Brown's 26 and Boyle is 90. That, those are the responsibilities that should happen. So look, at everybody's going right so far. Um, who is this? I forgot who this was. Bozeman, working 97. Bozeman working 97. Because we really don't care about blocking these two guys. As long as he don't come inside, we good. Let's move it down a little bit. Good job so far. Good job so far. So really the key guys right here. Let him let if he overruns it, you see it opening up now. If he overruns it and he cuts him off, that's where it's gonna hit. If 97 overruns it. And Hurts really did a, a crappy job. I don't know really know what that is. It's just good vision by Gus. Zeus really Zeus gets his man, boy blocks out. Uh, M, whatever his name is, does a good job with nine, with 79. Macari's 
protecting his gap, trying to get the bush, trying to get the bush. Now bush comes up. He would have had him if he if, if we pressed it this way, bush would have been blocked. But the fact that Gus cut it back, it, I ain't gonna say it hurt this right here, but because look at all this space, look at all this space. Now this is not all this space because of Hirsch now. This is all the space because of our um, Bozeman taking care of this guy. Hurst did a... Huh. It's a reason Joe Nubo calls him what he calls him. But despite that fact, you know, we still got a 14-yard gain off of outside zone. And this is on part... This is partly because of Bozeman and Gus's vision. So now if Hurst just turns out on this dude right now and let 28 come because he can't do nothing about 28. If he just turns out and just stops and just don't let him get any penetration, it's right there right now. These, he don't even have to make, uh, I think that's Edmonds. He don't even have to make Edmonds miss. And who knows what kind of what kind of yard she got on top of that. So let's go on to the next play. This is Gus again for about 13 yards. We got two guys in the backfield. The belly motion. Not a bad run. Did that motion pull anybody? Let me see. Let's go back and see. Did that motion pull anybody out the box? Yeah, pull two people out the box. Okay. Did that run again? Not a bad block by 70. Just looking at it from up top. Not a bad block. All right. So, uh, DeAnthon Thomas in the backfield. That's who that is. We got Hurst, Bozeman, McCarry, 70, Brown. Okay. DeAnthony going out because DeAnthony is a speedster. So, you got to kind of check for him. That draws out whoever this was and Bush. So now we're just gonna run, I think, inside zone other way, maybe, maybe or outside zone. Let's see. Run the inside zone other way. All right, so I'm gonna set these up. Run the inside zone right. This is a solo block with uh, Orlando. Should be a solo block with 70. Uh, McCarr should have a solo block. And reason is no double team because this dude walked up in the walked up in the line. Um, so now you're gonna have a double with Bozeman and Hurst. And I think we, this is our read guy. We're not going to touch him. And with 34 coming, Bozeman may try to get up 34. He may not. But right now, it's all solo blocks except for this backside block right here. And that's what you get so far. Uh, Lando kind of gets beat outside. But, you know, hopefully this run hits in there where it should be. You got good positioning here. Good positioning here. Good. Let them they race this guy on a double team. And this is the read guy. So that's what you got. That solo block was good. Uh, Macari's fighting here. Um, but look at the gap that's created by 70. He creates the huge gap for Gus to run through. And with that gap, he can't arm tackle. He's not fast enough. It's not a great block by Macari. He does a great, this is a great job of gap control by 79. He's in his gap. He's in his gap. But because his gap is this wide, he can't get the Gus. He's just not athletic. So, so that's a great job of this guy. And I have to go look his name up. And I know y'all going to kill me in the chat box. So I don't remember it. But that's a great job of him by opening that hole. Uh, this guy probably don't need to be out here right now. That's Hollywood. For, for what he does in the blocking game sometimes, you can keep Scott and, and Borkin in. Especially when we get the four-minute offense. Um, so that's 14 yards by Gus. This is RG3. RG3 on a run. This is not so much O-line play. This is just to show his athleticism. So I ain't going to spend a lot of time on this one. Not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Probably going to throw the commercial break in right here. Right after this play. Not much going on right here. They just sealed the guys off and he was trying to pass it. They weren't open. Okay, so I run it. Got a pancake by Boyle on TJ Watt. Here's the break right here. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. 
So go on over to patreon.com backslash zip the tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans, and again, thanks everyone for the support. And head on over to patreon.com backslash zip to tally. Now we back. So we got uh, Gus, his long run. And there's one guy's block that was significant, but he's not an old lineman, and that's Willie Sneed. That's Willie Sneed. So let's check the personnel again. Hirsch, Bozeman, McCarry, 70 again, Zeus, and Boyer. Um, and you, as you can see, Ben didn't play a lot. He played some, but he didn't play a lot. This guy played way more than Ben. And I'm going to check with um, Ken and when he does his O-line stuff to kind of see how many snaps he played. Because I know he played way more than, than Ben Powell's. This is basically the inside zone. Um, this he's the read guy right here. Bo, uh, her, who's this? Willis needs coming to block this dude, which is going to be a key block because for some reason the Pittsburgh still a slant to the left, to where well, to the offense's left, to the defense's right, and leave a huge hole because boy, you don't have anybody to block. You're getting a double team by M. Is it M. Finger? I think that's what I'm reading. Let's see if I get. Now we're back. You know, this is a great double team. And I think his name is M Finger. M something. I still keep bushing it. But um they got four guys. They got one, two, three, four guys basically on this side of the center and one guy here. He's the read guy and and um Sneed's coming to block him. So with him going straight at RG three, in which this cat right here was just trying to hit RG three all evening, being chippy, like a never mind. Look at the hole that's created. So they got a huge wall of purple, which is, as, a, as an offensive line coach, you love to see that. Just a wall of purple. This dude blocks, you know, expanding the gap. I could, I can get you eight yards on that. Maybe 10. Gus got you 38. Just run away from 34. And if he could have stepped over 39, he might have scored. Look at this hole. Let's go back and look at this hole. You you won't see very many holes in the NFL that big. You just won't. And he's still not blocking. He don't have nobody to block. Nobody. He's just over here waiting on somebody to show up. You don't see that in the NFL. Great job up front. And the last play we got is um, Justice's touchdown. And granted, this is O-line appreciation. This is a lot of individual effort by Justice Hill here. And let's check our personnel. Hurst, Bozeman, McCarry, Stavendale again, Zeus. So basically those five for most of these plays I, I've given you. Defensively, you got four D linemen. You got a linebacker. You got two safety type guys in the box. But they got seven in the box. Again, a, a split zone look. Solo block here, solo block. Double to 55. Hurst is coming here. He's our read guy. Boyle is to block one of these other guys. One of these is the read guy. Boyle is to block the other. Ooh. So, I think Hurst blocked the wrong guy. I think Hurst should have went up on 44, but I guess you get first threat. You get first threat. But a great double team by um, Bozeman and McCarty. Great double team right there. These two solo blocks are good. So when when he when he activates and tries to run this down, one of these guys has to come off. If he shoots that gap, um, McCarr should come off. If he tries to loop over the top, Bozeman should come off. That's what should happen. He stays for some strange reason and kind of gets caught in the wash. I uh, get a pancake by Hurst, even though I think he's blocking the wrong man. But what do I know? I'm not in the meetings. Uh, Reed man takes RG three. Um, I don't know where where ball is going. Boyle is going out there to nobody. So, basically, Justice Hill makes this guy miss. A combination of him running him over and him slipping him a little bit. Now he comes off on 97, kind of makes him miss, miss, and just slides through there for his touchdown. I think his second of the year, if I'm not mistaken. His second of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So, this was 
the basically a shout out to the O line. And yeah, you know the running backs got yards and whatnot, but without the O line, because you didn't have that electrifying guy at quarterback, you had just that fast guy at quarterback. Because RG three did a great job of running the offense. Did a great job of running the offense. He played with passion, like he was having fun. He was enjoyable to watch. You know, in the conditions, he he made it enjoyable to watch. He was excitable. He he was a he was a shell of. Rookie RG3, but he was worth the price of admission because of his passion and his his youthful exuberance for the game. Um, again, this is Coach Evans in Week 17. Uh, Sip the Tatter presents Ravens Roundup. Uh, enjoyed my first Ravens game at m and um, Enjoyed the bank. Enjoyed the city of Baltimore. Um, the su- support has been phenomenal so far, so if you want to continue to support, Patreon is in the description. Cash App's in the description. Um, and um, what's the other thing? I can't think of the other thing, but it's in the description. And I appreciate you guys uh, for your support, and I'll see you soon.